All right. What is up, everybody? Keith Jameson, go by Gator Guy 231 on Silver. Thank you for catching yet another episode of Silver Seatside. Last one of our budget series um, for MLS as we're about a week from kickoff. Uh, we went over midfielders, which there's a ton of like forwards, which do your best. Do your best if you're on a budget and just trying to grind, uh, grind threshold. But then, you know, save up those thresholds as much as you can to upgrade that forward spot so you give yourself some reward equity. And then another spot that you can get save a lot on is defender. So before we go into the players, reminder to that roster construction should be either two defenders or two midfielders, whichever one you prefer. There's going to be a much higher floor. Also, be just because of the state of the forward position, the way it's scored and what you can afford on a budget, those are also going to be your upside position. So two of those do not do two um, forwards. Um, if it was me, I would do two midfielders, one defender. Um, we're going to be going over center backs today. No fullbacks in the, on this video. Center backs on this over matrix are so much better than fullbacks. You have a lot less um, possessions lost. You have a lot more equity in terms of goals. A lot of the guys that we're going to talk about are set piece threats. They get more duels. Just everything that Sawyer scores in the SFI metrics benefits center backs over fullbacks. So one thing to keep in mind, especially if you're coming over from the DFS world, where we don't care about center backs, we only care about fullbacks. That's a big difference. All right, let's get into the picks. Just a quick reminder, like, subscribe, and comment on this video. If there's any questions, you can find me at GatorGuy231 on Discord. I pointed the wrong way. It, it happens. And then finally, uh, if you are new to Silver, one, feel free to reach me on to me in Discord for some help. But secondly, if you want to use my link, um, when you win five auctions, you get a free card, and so do I. Makes me want to help you that much more. All right, let's just jump right into it. Um, we're going to start out. Up, oh, we're going to get off my gallery, but we're going to start out with one of guys. And, and just, I guess, one other thing. I have a few of these guys in my gallery. A few I do not. They just don't really fit where my gallery is at. Um, so just just know that going into it. But you know, not anybody I'm planning to sell or like try to flip. None, none of that in this video. So Jonathan Mensa, captain of the Columbus Crew. Mensa is actually a monster. Um, he, you know, shows some big upside, but he just scored in a preseason game last night. Huge set piece threat. But the thing I like about Mensa is not just the fact that he can get up his upside, but he's just super consistent. I think his price is down a little bit because of the DMPs at the end of the year, but there's no way given what people are going for, given what, what somebody in my gallery, um, Ububakar from Colorado is going for like 1.16, 1 0.17. Like the difference between him and Mensa is like, it, it's not there. Like look at the overall scores for Mensa for a while. Again, he's captain. If he's fit, he will be in the game. Um, huge set piece threat. There's like just nothing not to like about Jonathan Mensa here. Um, so I think he is, you know, not only is he on the cover of this video, but I just think he's a stone lock if you're looking for a budget. And if 0.8 fits you, right? So I don't know why I'm in euros, but 0.8 is about like 250 bucks. Uh, nothing that's over as cheap as if, if this is your first video. Unfortunately, that is the case when we're looking at rare cards. Um, but I think Jonathan Minza will uh, immediately help you yield um, that back. Matt Hedges is very similar to Jonathan Minza, captain of his club for Dallas. Huge set piece, piece threat as well. When he is also fit, he will be in. Last year, he struggled with fitness. Those, those scores were not nearly as good as what we've seen Matt Hedges in the past. I think Dallas is going to be improved. Um, I own his super rare, as you can see. There. I did have a rare of him, and I and I sold out um, like a week ago. Just didn't ever I was building lineups, never saw him in there because I'm already using the super rare. But again, hedges at his price at that like 0.75 is his or 0.075 is his floor right now. If you actually look at his averages in the 0.06s, I think that that's just another guy slam dunk. Give you in the 50s, so great for ETH grinding, and gives you some nice upside with the set piece threat. Um, you know, chance for double doubles, triple triples, that's up type of stuff. So uh, Matt Hedges is another. Florian Jungworth was in my video about a month ago for building a lineup um, before stuff rose, but building a rare team under $500. Um, he has gone up a bit around 0.045. Jungworth is super versatile back to his San Jose days, played in midfield uh, as like a number six, plays as a center back for Vancouver. I do think Vancouver, especially at home this season, is going to be much improved. Um, Jungworth, once again, much like the other two, is a set piece threat. So we get floor plus upside. You are seeing a trend. The Abasi um, is another cheapie, 0.065-ish on a 
fairly good defensive team. Minnesota does keep cheats, especially at home. Um, much like Minsa, much like Chungworth, much like Hedges, we just see we get a mixture of really nice floor, so smooth out in the 40s and some some spikes. I don't know uh, Diabasi's game nearly as much as I know the other three. I don't recall how much of a set piece threat he is, but just the pure floor, just consistent 40s, high 40s and 50s. You know, we really like to see that. And you also have very few DMPs. If he's fit, he's going to be in. Final, and this is the only risky one on here, in my opinion, is for Francisco Calvo. But I think Calvo could also pay off some of the most dividends. New team of San, San Jose. Calvo is just a beast. Like, if you ever watched him back to Costa Rica or the fire or any of his previous stops, like, he's one of those guys, if you're rooting for him, you love him. If you are rooting against him, you absolutely hate this dude's guts. He's all, he's like, all up into, you know, pardon my French, but stirring up shit um, in people's faces constantly, um, you know, doing some questionable tactics. But when you are rooting for him, you love all of it. He can take free kicks. I've seen him take some free kicks, some missiles. He's not afraid to shoot. It's a definite set piece threat. Is going to make tackles all over the pitch. And you see some just massive scores. I think his score, his score is going to be held down. I'm actually thinking, like, I might want to go get a copy. I, as I'm like talking, I'm convincing myself that 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 Calvo could really be a, a, a big upside play while giving you floor, right? Once again, 50 is just a lot more upside than the other guys. And the only downfall is that San Jose could be bad. They were doing some weird formation um, in the last preseason game, but Calvo was like a left, a left center back and a back three with UEL but beside him. I don't know. It could be really interesting. They could give up a lot of goals, which is going to help his score, but – um, Calvo is super aggressive and a really nice player to have on a budget. All right, that'll do it. If you guys like the video, like, subscribe, comment, all really helps. Thank you all once again for watching. With that, I'll say, soup.